Hey everybody, I'm Rob Freeman and welcome back to Insuring the Built Environment, where every week we talk about insurance and issues in the world of clean energy and how you can become a smarter insurance buyer and save time and money when doing so. So last week we talked about how bi-directional charging is really going to change everything in the world of EV charging and also energy storage. And so we're going to stay on that topic and this week we're going to talk about EV charging station insurance and some risk factors to consider whether you are a property owner considering installing an EV charging station or if you're an installer installing these charging stations. So first let's talk about the types of EV charging equipment that's out there. You really have uh, three types, level one, level two, and level three. Now level one is basically just a cord like with a, with a plug like you'd find on any sort of appliance you have in your house. It's just a 120 volt plug that'll plug into your house. And it's a very slow option for charging your EV. Now these uh, level one chargers typically just come with every EV that's sold. And so everybody has them. They drive around with them. They usually keep them in their trunk as a backup. But what they really want is to use either a level two or a level three charger. Now a level two will use a 208 volt uh, plug and you can also have one in installed in your home. And that'll be about as twice as fast as a level one charger. And this is the type of outlet you'd find you know, with a washer dryer hookup. Uh, and so these are much better. And then you also find level two along with level three out uh, in the wild at, at sh uh, shopping centers, uh, other re retail locations, hotels, office buildings, anywhere where you'd find a public charging station. And then you have level three, which is called a fast charger. And a level three charger is about 20 times as fast as a level two. And uh, level three chargers are using direct current as opposed to alternating current, which is what levels one and two use. Uh, but anyway, uh, these are all different types of things that are now common, and so they create different risk issues. So for instance, on the level one side, you might say, well, how, what, how is that gonna affect me as a hotel owner? Well, I was out in California, and I was walking through the hotel parking lot, I was staying at a hotel, and I see this guy has run his level one charger out his hotel window, his hotel room window to his electric vehicle and it was charging it. I thought it was hilarious. So I took a picture of it. Actually, we'll link to the picture at a, or link to an article below this video uh, where you can see this. It was just, you know, the guy just was running it right out of his hotel window. So it was creating a tripping hazard. And if somebody trips and falls and hurt, hurts themselves, they're probably not gonna sue the EV owner, they're gonna sue the hotel, and that's gonna cause their general liability insurance premiums to go up, which is, you know, nobody wants that. So just something to think about. You could have a situation where you own a multifamily building or an office building or some retail location, and you don't have enough uh, EV charging equipment, EV, char EV charging stations, but you have lots of EVs, and then you can have people doing this type of thing where they're just plugging in wherever they can and creating tripping hazards or other types of, of hazards. So that's with a level one. Now level two and level three have their own issues per in, in pertaining to thinking about where the equipment should be installed and how it should be installed. So um, in terms of installation, you really want to put together like a pre-installation checklist to make sure that the site location is secure, is well lit, uh, is protected physically from vehicles that might uh, damage the equipment, and uh, that it is in a location that is easily accessible. Now, uh, you often see EV charging uh, stations in kind of remote locations or away from uh, or sometimes you see them closer to the entrance to the building, but it sort of is all over the map. And the important thing is you don't want to have any safety or security issues from somebody wanting to charge their vehicle at night and they feel unsafe. The, the, the site should be well lit. It also should be secure uh, from potential damage from vehicles. Now, uh, some of my real estate portfolio clients, I'm, sh I'm, I'm constantly amazed that uh, by the number of vehicles that they have who come to visit the buildings with their office or retail buildings and they just drive right into the building, like physically hit the building. And it causes damage and then it, it causes their 
uh, property insurance to go up because they have a property claim. Now, uh, with an EV charging station, obviously the vehicles are just driving right up, so they're likely to cause damage unless there's a, uh, a uh, wheel, a uh, curb guard, or if there are concrete or steel cylinder bollards that are protecting the EV equipment. So you wanna have all, obviously all of that stuff. If you are in, located in New England or someplace where you're gonna get snow, uh, unless you wanna be digging out this EV charging equipment uh, by hand every time you get snow, you wanna make sure that it's easily accessible for the plow guys and that they've been you know, instructed how to clean that out. Maybe you have to tell them that they have to use their uh, physical shovels to get that stuff out. Uh, and wanna make sure that you also have good wireless and electrical connectivity, obviously, to um, be able to service the equipment. Now, if you use a, if you're gonna own this station, you probably are gonna get hooked up with a network like a charge point or other network that will help you uh, and drive people to the charging equipment to use it. And if they're doing that, you need to have good wireless connectivity to the network that's being used. So that's for the level two and level three chargers. Now, uh, if, if you are an installer uh, or if you are owning the network of chargers or if you own the property where the charging equipment is being installed, there are uh, contractual liability and property and general liability and errors and omissions and cyber insurance factors to consider. So in all cases, there should be a general liability and umbrella policy. And if you own the network and you're providing uh, connectivity to it, you should have a tech errors and omissions policy as well as cyber. And if you own the network as well, you need to have property insurance, obviously to protect the equipment in case it gets damaged. Um, uh, one another important area to, met, to th think about is how the cables are managed. So when they're not being charged, is the cable just sitting on, on the ground ready to get run over or to create a tripping hazard? Or is it easily stowed or does it retract into the equipment itself to avoid creating another hazard or to create a potential for that property to get damaged? So uh, those are things to consider as well. Now. Uh, if you are the owner of the building and you are working with an installer, make sure that you have proper contractual indemnification in the contract in the installation uh, and that the installer has the right levels, layers of, excuse me, the right uh, limits of general liability and umbrella insurance and they have products completed operations coverage that is buttoned up. Uh, and that you are properly indemnified in the event that something goes wrong. And this is big, very important in some states like New York uh, or in California, there are specific laws around uh, the installation of EV charging stations. And so you wanna be sure that you're taken care of in that regard as well. So um, that's kind of it in a nutshell, uh, in terms of thinking about a pre-installation checklist. Obviously there are physical hazards and considerations to make. And then on the insurance side, as a business, you need to be able to protect yourself with your own insurance, but also get indemnification from anybody who's providing services or installation for you. And, uh, you know, just make sure that everything is uh, in the right place and that um, you have the right type of protection that you need. So uh, anyway, if you have questions about your insurance or anything related to an EV charging station insurance policy or installation, please feel free to schedule an appointment with me at the link below this video. Uh, thanks again for watching and I hope this is helpful and have a great day.